Hey there friends and enemies, Jopri here again and today I've got another Remnant 2 tier list as I know you guys will agree with every single one of my takes as per usual. Today we are ranking all of the long guns currently in the game after the Forgotten Kingdom DLC with the latest patch in mind. So this is all subject to change obviously if we get future buffs and nerfs. But keep in mind it is supposed to be constructive in the comments. If you disagree, remember everyone has different play styles, different builds they use, different inputs like controller versus mouse and keyboard. So link me to videos that you see that might prove me wrong if I underrate some of your favorites, but otherwise let's be constructive with our criticism. Anyway, jumping into it, I'm gonna start off with the Bulldog. This is a weapon that now feels very underwhelming. I don't really enjoy using the majority of shotguns in the game right now, and that is kind of a shame because I did like them for quite some time. It just feels like right now they are not as good as they once were. After some of the different nerfs and hits to the way different builds use them and they were broken to be honest for a while especially with some of the different crit builds but now they just feel a little bit less impactful to me then we've got the black maw this might be a bit of bias you might disagree with me i think this is a tier i love the black maw it's my favorite feeling weapon regular long gun in the entire game and I will use it as often as I possibly can because of that maybe I overrate the thing just a little bit I think it's personally better than the Chicago typewriter I don't know if it's just the way the gun feels but the typewriter has some better stats but the black ball just feels like it's so consistent that that's why I enjoy using it a bit more and Either one of those options is good if you want to run them, if it's your favorite in your builds. But for me, I just so much prefer the Black Maw. I'm going to rank it a little bit above. That's going to be one of my few bias picks, to be honest. And if I am right about that, great. If not, oh well, no big deal. Then we move on to the Coach Gun. This is fine. I think it's one of those solid options if you want to run this in uh, builds that can, again, really focus on chunk damage. But... To me, there's better options right now, and so it's hurt as much by the fact that we have other better options for that slot rather than it being not great right now. That's just my personal opinion. I think it is solid. It does what it's supposed to do, but I just feel very underwhelming. This is going to pain me to admit. I personally think both crossbows are in D tier. Now, this is tough because I've used them. I don't mind them so much but i don't think either one of them does what i want them to do they feel like they are worse than bows and shotguns or snipers and then obviously they don't have full auto so i, I just overall i don't care for either one of them and that's really a big bummer because i wanted to love the trinity crossbow it was one of those weapons that I was really looking forward to when I first saw it, and I was hopeful that it would really be the weapon that I would be maining right now. It just doesn't do what I want it to do. It doesn't feel strong enough for how the reload works, for how much damage it does. It just, I think it needs a buff quite bad, and I wouldn't be surprised if the Trinity Crossbow gets the biggest buff in the next patch that we do see down the line. Now, I could be wrong on that, but I feel like the Trinity crossbow is badly in need of it and could be so much better. The crossbow, I might underrate. I just feel like it's a tweener gun that doesn't do the things that I personally want it to do. Then we've got the Ford scatter gun. I think this is actually A tier. Of all the single shot weapons in the game, the, the sniper rifles and shotguns currently, I think this is my favorite of the regular weapons that don't have intrinsic mods. And yeah, I just think it's really, really solid. The rest of them feel fine, but they don't stand out in the same way as the Ford Scatter Gun. To me, I just feel like it's a better option. Speaking of which, we have the Huntmaster. This one, I think, again, right there in the B tier. There's a lot of these that kind of hover around the same functionality, fuel matters, how much damage they do. But overall, I just think I would prefer to use something else unless I'm running a specific crit build or something of that nature and that's why i don't really run them all that often but that again personal preference pulse rifle now as much as i love the black maw i have to admit that i feel like the pulse rifle is the best 
of the regular long guns in the game just being completely neutral it feels fantastic it does exactly what you would hope it would do and i think the ability to put a mod on this and and just do pretty wild stuff as far as damage and and the way that it works as a pulse rifle as somebody who's played like games like destiny and uses pulse rifles quite a bit this one feels really really good to me and it's one that i've kind of slept on a little bit i felt like it was underwhelming when i first use it and i put it away but then, as I got used to it, as I started playing around with it more, I felt really, really good. Anyway, the Crescent, or sorry, the Royal Hunting Bow is next. I think this is C tier. And the reason for that is I just feel like the other bows are just better right now. Even though the Crescent Moon did get nerfed, it still feels like I would rather use that than this. And then the Sagittarius is just above both of those. So that's why I have the Royal Hunting Bow. A lot of times when I'm comparing weapons... It's how do they relate to other weapons that are trying to do a similar thing or perform a similar type of gameplay, uh, type of play style. So I think that is very, very important. Then we get to the Rusty Lever Action as well as the Wrangler, Wrangler 1860. Both of these weapons, again, are f okay. Uh, I think they're C tier compared to the other options. They both are... I don't have another icon for the Wrangler, but... They both are okay. Like, I think they can do a job. It's just not for me. Then we've got the Widowmaker, which I think is, again, I think this one is a better option if we're using one of these sniper-type uh, rifles. Whereas the Rusty Lever Action and the Wrangler, the shotguns, just feel very much mid right now. Now we get to the Bone Saw, which some people love. I've had people tell me that the Bone Saw is excellent. I think it's bad. I don't like it in the majority of builds that I would want to run. The reload is not great. The damage isn't making up for it. And I just don't care for the bone saw. I just think there's way better options. I would rather use a lot of other full auto weapons instead of it. Then we have the spark fire. Now, this is where I'm going to deviate from me talking trash about the shotguns in the game right now. Because I feel like the spark fire is still very good as an applicator for fire damage and there are certain builds that you can run with this to make you almost never have to reload or never have to reload at all and i think because of that it serves a purpose in a way that a lot of the other regular weapons don't you can if you need a uh, a burn applicator you can have that if you want a weapon that you don't have to reload you can have that there's just a lot more versatility with this one, especially if you want to do a ritualist build with multiple uh, different types of damage, you can throw on a uh, corrosive mod, uh, mutator to add to that. You can throw on a bleed mutator. So there's a lot of different ways you can use this gun, which is why I keep it up in A tier. And again, I think some people disagree. Some people think it's not as good but i think if you're looking at just primarily using your gun it might drop down but if you're using it as an applicator for other play styles that's where it spikes up a little bit and it gets a lot more value now we're moving on to the special long guns where we start off with the alpha omega this weapon has never impressed me i think it is i think it's fine i think it probably sits there in the b tier i would use it above pretty much all of my c tier options but it's just not one that i would ever incorporate into a build where i'm really wanting to do a lot of damage or really wanting to play in a way that i find enjoyable and so that's why it drops down a bit for me personally then we move on to the affilion this the base version not for me at all i think this is a c tier and it's just not one of my favorite weapons. I don't like it. I think it can definitely get better. And yeah, I, I do like that the Corrupted version is much better. This is where I'm going to talk about that. I actually, I, I know people disagree. I think the Corrupted Affiliate is an A-tier weapon. And the reason for that, the way you can chain the explosion damage with the mod and just have it be a near infinite cycle is pretty insane to me. And just very fun. I know not everyone loves it, but once you get the play style down, it is a blast. And that's why I like it personally. I think it's one of those weapons where... If you enjoy the play style, if you enjoy what it does, it's cool. If not, then you're going to be underwhelmed by it. It's not going to do 
the most insane damage, but it can do very good damage, and it can add clear. It can do a lot of different things if you learn how to use it correctly. So that's why I'm going to put it in A tier. Maybe I'm overrating it a little bit, but that's just uh, my own thoughts on the matter. Then we got the Crescent Moon. Like I said, this one is fine. I think this is solidly in the B tier. Uh, I would like it more. I like it more than the Royal Hunting Bow, but I don't like it as much as the Sagittarius. And so it used to be uh, before some of the recent patches that this was S tier for sure. It was absolutely insane, and now I think it's dropped down just a bit to that B tier. Still very useful, still very good, but overall one of those weapons that I think there's other better options for what it does right now. Then we get to the Deceit, the base version, which I think is a B tier, whereas the Corrupted Deceit is probably, I gotta pick that up from there, probably Corrupted Deceit is probably going to fall in uh, kind of high A, low S maybe. I think it's very good. The things it does, the way you can build into it is pretty insane. It's one of the better options in my opinion. And I think this is part of the reason why I don't use any of these other long guns that are more single shot types. Just because I feel like the Corrupted Deceit is so good right now that it's just preferable to those other options in my opinion. And so that's why I'm going to rank it at S here. I think it is the best at what it does and it's going to be ranked very, very highly because of that. Then we are moving on to the Merciless. I loved this weapon for a long time. I think it is just fine now. I think bleed builds in general, this and the Corrupted Merciless are, are both C tier. Before the Forgotten Kingdom DLC, I was running bleed builds all the time and I love them. I thought they were fantastic. They did nice damage. They did a lot of things very, very well. I would have ranked these up there in uh, maybe A tier or so. And now, just not for me. I think they just both feel underwhelming since the patch. And that's really a bummer for me because they are some of my favorite weapons that I've ever used in the game. I just think they're just not as good as they once were. Then we're going to talk about the Nightfall. This is a funny one because you can get a near infinite mod spam with your uh, invisible version of this where you're getting the life seal, you're getting the damage, all that kind of good stuff with a certain pairing. So because of that, it jumps up to A tier. This is another weapon. This is the first weapon that I used to go through my Apocalypse level clear, and I thought it used to be awesome. It was doing insane damage. Then they nerfed it, and I, I put it down. I, I stopped using it for a long time until recently we got a new uh, amulet, uh, uh, sorry, a new ring that allows you to essentially spam this forever. And because of that, it is fantastic. Once again, it is very much fun. I love it. I will use this all the time now and it's hyper specific. So that's why it's not a S tier. You have to run a certain pairing with this to make it feel really good again. And so that's a little bit of a bummer, but even still, it is a lot of fun. It's a very good weapon. Then we've got the plasma cutter. Ah, I struggle with this one. I think it's kind of C tier. I don't like the cooldown weapons personally, and maybe that has to do with why I ranked this one a bit lower. I, this is a weapon that I wish I liked more, and I really do mean that. I really wish this was a weapon that I would use more consistently, that I felt like was really, really good. But ultimately, I just don't care for it. I'm not a fan, and it just feels like every time I use it, I wish I was using something else. And so that's why it's going to go to C tier. Then we've got the Sagittarius. I think this is a solid S tier. It's the best bow right now in the game. And that's surprising to me because I hadn't used this one. This is another one that I had really kind of slept on for a very long time. But now that I put down my Crescent Moon, this has kind of replaced it in my arsenal. And I do very much enjoy using it. Now we have the base version of the Twisted Arbalist, which I think is a weapon I will never use unless it gets a massive buff. It doesn't feel good to me at all right now. It is not a weapon that I enjoy using. And so you put that all together, it's going to drop there into the D tier. Next up, we got the Repulsor. This one I actually like. I think this one, a high B, low A maybe. I, I might put it here in the B tier, uh, although I could be convinced to bump this up higher. I, I never really loved this weapon until a few months ago when I really jumped into it and I started messing around and I felt like it is a unique play style. It is something that I do enjoy using and so that's why it's going to drop there right into the B tier. 
Then we've got Corrupted Savior. Now, I didn't talk about regular Savior. I think regular Savior is here in C tier. I don't have a icon for that. But the Corrupted Savior, I think, is an A tier. This is a weapon. A B tier, I'm sorry. This is a weapon that I do feel like is good. It is pretty solid but it was when it first came with the new when we first had this with the forgotten kingdom patch it was great and then it got adjusted i think they did a bug fix and it just feels way worse now so that, i think that kind of taints my perspective a little bit it changes how i really like to uh, use this thing i feel like it is one of those that i really liked for a while and now it just doesn't feel as good to me overall so that's one that i will rank at a b tier i think it's fine but it's just not my favorite currently then moving on we have the star killer this is another one that's this one's hard because i've seen people run this in co-op and to great effect but they also are detrimental to the team when they're using it in my opinion and so that's why I'm going to put it there in B tier. It's got some major drawbacks that I can't get past, even though I do think it is a very good weapon. And I do think it's worth obtaining. I just think that there are certain scenarios where it's not the best option for the job. And so I'm going to drop it down just a bit. Spore Bloom. This is one that I used to enjoy using, again, like I mentioned with some other shotguns in the game. And now it just feels underwhelming and... Maybe because it feels so much worse than it did, it feels worse than it actually is. It might still be fairly useful, but for me, it's just not the one that I'm going to use. Next up, we got the Monarch. This is one of the new ones, and I think it's fine. I think it's, this is a fine weapon. I would say this is in B tier as well. This is one of those weapons that... I've seen other people use it, and they really love it. I've seen others use it, and they really hate it. That's why I think it belongs right there in the B tier. Now we've got Monolith. This is a solid, solid S tier. Now, you may be wondering why I don't put a lot of options in the S tier, and my reasoning for that is I always feel like people have way too many S tier when there's not that many. There are certain weapons that are clearly better than others. And if I'm looking at this and I, I have 10 S tiers, that's too many for me personally. The Monolith is so good. You see it on so many builds. Pair with the Nebula and you don't even need to make a build essentially. You can just infinitely uh, do damage and just do a ton of mod spam with a reduction in mod usage overall. They just feel like they are super useful and so that's why they're so very good right now this is one if i said that the uh, trinity crossbow is probably going to get a buff i would not be surprised if we get a mono nerf sooner than later this is where we get a little controversial i know some people hate the polygon i know some people love the polygon for me personally i do very much enjoy it i think it's got its usage but I do knock it for a couple different reasons. I'm going to put it in C tier. I think it is better than this as a weapon. I just think as something that takes so much time, energy, and effort in order to obtain, to then have a weapon that is harder to use than other options that are more powerful still. Like if the polygon was just clearly a higher dps better damage weapon than a lot of the other options in the game but you just had to time your reload you had to time your shots count your shots all that stuff then it would be fine that's a good trade-off especially for a weapon that takes a lot of effort to obtain but instead it feels like the polygon does comparable damage to a lot of the other options with more effort and so because of that i think it's a little bit worse again Maybe I just feel that way because of the way that it works with different builds. You really have to be more uh, considerate of what you're doing at any given time. But that's why it's going to rank at C for me. And then finally, we've got the Thorn. This is another one. I, I like this one. I think it's solid overall. I just think it's going to still slide in there, the C tier, because... While the explosive damage is not bad, I think it can definitely be useful in certain builds with certain combinations. 
it still is not going to be your best option in the majority of cases with your explosive builds. So because of that, and because it takes a lot of work, you have to put in a lot of the needles essentially into enemies in order to have the explosion hit as hard as other options are hitting with just a base mod. That's why it takes a lot more setup in order to be effective. And that's why I'm dropping it down the C tier. Anyway, this is going to be my tier list. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, majority of things are in that A or in that B and C tier. No surprise there. I think by and large, I try to rank things, not just how good they are in the game, but also compared to each other. And because of that, sometimes I'll have more clusters in the middle because they're weapons that are good, but not great. They don't stand out or they are weapons that are useful in certain ways but just not absolutely dominant like those at the top anyway let me know what you guys think in the comments down below my name is joe Poe. if you enjoyed the video hit the like button subscribe to the channel helps me out tremendously shows you want to see more remnant 2 content from me going forward have a good one i'll catch you all later